Welcome to the Friday edition of Wands World and I'm going to be asking the question today where is home? Uh, that may not seem like a question to unpack Easter with but we'll get around to that. I'm interested in the concept of home and have been for most of my life in large part because I've spent most of my life, I guess if I actually calculated it um, properly, it would come out to around 80%, perhaps a little more, 80% uh, of my life as an immigrant. Uh, I was born in Buenos Aires, and my parents were British. Um, I spent almost all of my childhood, uh, up until the mid-teen years, in South Australia as an immigrant and then I went to school and university briefly in England total of about eight years and then I spent something like 40 years as an immigrant in the United States and uh, when I retired from uh, working in the United States I returned to Buenos Aires where I was born and I spent about an equal amount of time there as I had spent in England as a teenager. And then I went back to traveling the world, uh, to China and um, Italy, Myanmar, or Cambodia. And for me, the answer to where is home is kind of simple and complicated. Uh, home is where I happen to live. So right now my home is Cambodia. Uh, is it a spiritual home? No, <laughs> but it's my home. Anyway, this is a very complicated uh, topic. Uh, I want to get into it in detail. And what I'm going to do at the outset is I'm going to keep talking, but you're going to be seeing me walking around the streets of my neighborhood uh, as I did in a video last week, uh, kind of to balance the concept of where I am versus where my home is. So let's get started on that. Alright, so we can pick things up here, <laughs> just like I'm picking up my camera. I'm not going to uh, narrate what's happening. Uh, you'll have to just figure it out for yourself um, whilst I talk about this concept of home. And it came to me as an idea not long ago when I was talking to some Chinese friends. And quite often they would say to me, um, I'm going home this weekend. And what they meant by going home was going to their parents' house. And generally speaking, that meant in another location, another, not another, necessarily another city, usually another town or small village um, that is very common in China for people to grow up in relatively rural environments. Um, but then when they want to go to college or when they want to get work, they move into big cities. And I lived in Kunming at the time, and that's where most of my friends live now. And so when they say I'm going home, they mean they're going to some village that's a bus ride or a train ride or um, a way away. You know, it's not somewhere where they can just pop in casually for the evening. They have to make a decision to go to stay 
overnight and normally it will be let's say for a weekend where they'll stay for a couple of nights so for them the concept of home is where I was born and that's that's a pretty generally uh, familiar concept um, you'll remember from my video on mothering Sunday that your mother church was um, the church in England uh, where you were baptized and you were obviously baptized where you were born and so your mother church is in your hometown and you can talk about your hometown as a place that you have special feelings for because you grew up there well I grew up in Gawler South Australia which is um, I don't know the exact distance but it's, it's uh, it used to be about 30 minutes by car down the main north road from from Adelaide uh, or you could take a train um, I don't consider Gawler to be my home even though that's where I grew up I went to primary school there and most of my secondary school um, but I don't have any great affinity there I I was in the Boy Scouts there uh, that was very formative in my young days um, it, it led from um, being a patrol leader in both Australia and England to going to the World Jamboree and when I went to the World Jamboree my troop from Buckinghamshire learned Morris dancing and I became a Morris dancer and that became one of my professional uh, specialties and uh, moving on from traditional dance in England to dance in general and aesthetics and blah 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 you know like my whole career blossomed out of that um, but I still would not consider South Australia in any sense to be my home even though at the time it certainly was my home but other places uh, took over um, Oxford was my old old maternal um, family home my matriline my mother's father and his huge family um, lived in Oxford at the uh, turn of the 19th 20th century and many 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 of my relatives still live there and I went to university there so I, in some ways I consider Oxford to have a kind of home feeling about it but I don't miss it I don't feel like I have to somehow go back there if I never went back there again I, I wouldn't uh, be particularly upset although in my younger days I would have you know because I, I lived there long enough to form attachments a lot of people um, became um, close one way or another as well, as well not family so much but uh, many many students and um, and whatnot and dancers and um, and locations there and so forth but I still would not I, I wouldn't now um, I lament anything like we've got May 1st it's going to be coming up on Sunday and May morning as dancing as the sun rises used to be really really important to the Morris dancers at Oxford University when I was there and when I left and went to the United States I would I would be deeply troubled on May 1st um, because I couldn't be to Oxford but I'm over that I, I mean I don't I don't I don't miss it anymore uh, because other things have intervened including the fact that I got married I settled down in um, in the Catskills in New York I had a son uh, I I had deep connections with uh, academics and uh, professionals of other sorts in New York 
and I also had um, kind of I wouldn't say deep but I had I had some affinity for my own house uh, <laughs> in Spanish it's interesting we use the word la casa uh, to mean house and home whereas in English we distinguish between house and home and in Spanish we would say hogar for home hogar really means hearth or you know like like fireplace and I, I, I like that also but but generally when you say I'm going home in Spanish you, you just say you're going to the house la casa uh, so my house in New York certainly had a home feeling to it but but I didn't miss it when I left uh, I left to go to uh, Argentina and I was more excited about returning to where I was born to where my something of identity resided such that I could go back and get a, an identity card and a passport I could reclaim my name my mother had always used my en English version of my name but my legal name has always been Juan Alejandro. It's never been changed legally. Uh, my mother used my English name when she registered me in schools in Australia and nobody batted an eye. Uh, <laughs> when I got my first passport in England I presented my um, my birth certificate in Spanish. Nobody batted an eyelid. I did have to get it translated into English when I um, when I had a, a permanent passport, but um, but they didn't they didn't worry about what my name was. They didn't say, "Well, wait a minute, it says Juan Alejandro on your birth certificate. Why do you, why are you using John Alexander?" It's like, well, that's because that's what I use, and. The law is that if you use a name consistently without attempt to defraud anybody, then for all intents and purposes, that's your name. So I've used that name uh, for publishing all my life. Um, but when I returned to Argentina, I reclaimed my sense of being uh, Argentino. And all of my friends in Buenos Aires think of me first and foremost as Argentino uh, they even call me Argentinissimo like really really Argentine well I mean <laughs> I I don't know how to parse that probably but Buenos Aires is not my home either um, from there I I moved to China and I've, I've lived about approximately two years in different places, two years in China, uh, two years in Italy, um, was supposed to be two years in Myanmar but it wasn't that long and now it's been four years in Cambodia because of the pandemic. But none of these places are my home in any spiritual sense but they're home enough, you know, my, I've got my kitchen here and my cooking things and whatnot. I don't have a lot of memorabilia. I don't have a lot of things that I used to clutter my house up with in New York. All to the good. I don't want clutter. Uh, so it means that for me home is as much a mental concept as a physical concept. And so what I want to know from you is what do you consider to be your home? Is it where your family lives, where you were born, where you're living now. What is it? What identifies home for you? And the reason I'm actually you know, like belaboring this a little bit is that in the Christian tradition, say we will get <laughs> around to Easter at some point here, in the Christian tradition, home is identified as the place where you will be with God and uh, I wrote a, a book for, which was um, from my dissertation called Lord I'm Coming Home which is the name of a, 
of a hymn in the Baptist tradition. So I'm coming home means, you know, I've, I, it says I, like I've strayed away, now I'm coming home. Um, a home is not just where the heart is, home is where God is. Um, so, it, where is your heart? Where, where do you belong? Where would you feel comfortable and safe and secure and loved even? Interesting question. So as far as I'm concerned, Phnom Penh does that just fine. I'm happy, secure, healthy. Don't know about loved. <laughs> Not sure about that. But respected. You know, my students, my colleagues, the universities and uh, so forth, I think uh, respect me. That's, that's close enough. So until next time, when it'll be May already, uh, I wish you the best and please tell your friends about my, my videos. Please like, please subscribe and I will see you next time.